What's happened to Bella's feast your eyes on what we think is the finest penton that we've ever had at the museum. And we've had, we have more pentons on YouTube than anybody else in the world. This particular one was the final year of the Penton brand. They were in the process of, you can see the engine is, is actually a KTM engine. And KTM was in the process of buying John Penton out. This was signed by John Penton and he's still alive. He's getting up there and I think he's in his nineties now, but he was the original, he's actual, the Penton name is named after John Penton. This bike is absolutely world-class museum quality restoration of a very low R original. The fit and finish on this thing is second to none. All the aluminum, looking at the fork blowers, you might wonder, geez, are those chrome? No, those are the original Seriani forks rebuilt inside and polished on the outside with the Seriani from Italy sticker on the front. This thing is absolutely bristling with perfection front to back and it runs just like a brand new motorcycle. Starting at the front, looking at these Akron rims here, you can see it has the Akron sticker on here. These are the original factory rims polished, laced with new spokes. The hub has been carefully restored and repainted, new brake pads, all the fit and finish, all the hardware looks to be original or brand new perfection. Going up from there, the forks are completely restored. There's not a no, no pitting on the chrome. This is from the Randy Gillespie collection. It, it was stored in a radiant heat floor with no windows, private museum for many years. Randy only collected mint originals or perfect, perfect restorations. This is a perfect restoration of a mint original. It's got the high point front number plate with the proper mounting rubber band system in the back here with the brackets. The triple clamps look like they just came out of the box. The front fender is beautiful. The forks are like new. The handlebars are new chrome handlebars, new Magura levers with a nice leather original authentic Magura perch in leather cover. The original Magura clutch, uh, excuse me, um, choke lever is intact, including the brand new uh, cables with the lube, lube point right here. The throttle assembly is the proper Magura throttle assembly with the proper Magura levers on there, as you can see. The, um, excuse me, Magura grips it has the, uh, new Magura brake lever. So everything on the front here looks like it just came out of the box, including the uh, the, the bolt hold the steering stem on chrome. The tank is a work of art. The fiberglass tank, the paint is stunning on it. It has a black and white stripe. It has the original uh, rubber straps with the spring loading on there to keep the tank from vibrating or, or, or loosening up. The paint job is impeccable. And where do you find a 47 year old fiberglass side number plate in that kind of shape? Really nowhere unless it's in a museum, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, the plate on this side also, very rarely do you find these in this kind of shape. Thing is a crack and dent and damage free, painted beautifully in the original Penton 250GS hair scrambler colors. This bike was capable of motocross or hair scramble. It is a six speed transmission. It has a chrome Molly Bedenum, you see right there, uh, tubing for the swing arm, the frame, top shelf components. These were the bikes to have if you were a youngster back in the 70s, like I was, I was 10 years old when this bike came out. You saw these in the magazines, you just knew it was the best of everything. Akron wheels, Seriani forks, Seriani shock. Look at the fit and finish of the shock. The shock appears to be brand new, like it just came out of the box, as do the bolts, the swing arm. And one of the first things to go on most classic trail bikes is the kickstand. This one looks like it just came out of the box with the proper original rubber uh, dampener to keep it from vibrating there just spectacular the pegs look new the shifter looks new the the magnesium engine cases the massive cylinder head and jug on this thing just just dwarfs even a 500 two-stroke liquid cool because it has these massive cooling fans that kept it cool for the international six-day trials when they're running these things through the mud the original bing 54 carb looks like it just came out of the box the uh rubber intake to the that the bike was taken completely down to the frame and restored. The engine's completely rebuilt. The crank was rebuilt. New base gasket, new head gasket, new piston, new rings, new uh, air filter. The original exhaust system is one of the finest originals I've ever seen uh, on any dirt bike fr from the 70s. Look at this thing with the end cap on it. It's just freaking spectacular. Um, the frame is 100% perfect with, with n not a single ding. If you look underneath here, I always say look underneath. These were off-road bikes that are ridden through the rocks. 
pure perfection. That's why I say this is the nicest Penton KTM we've had through the shop. The blue co coating on the original magnesium engine cases, new primary uh, counter shaft sprocket, chain, rear sprocket and chain. The um, Everything on, on the motor is completely rebuilt. All new seals, all new gaskets. This brake lever here is NOS brand new. It's it's not a scratch on it. It looks like it just came out of the box as is the brake, uh, the brake, um, <clears throat> complete brake system, the rear brake pads, the, the pulley, the chrome on the on the push rod, the uh, brake stay. The, look at the size of this original factory KTM Penton chain guide. It's freaking massive. I mean, this thing's designed to, to, to go through international six day trials. The rear wheels polished to perfection. This has the correct Barum Desert Racing tires on here. Heavy duty Barum race, Barum Racing Desert Racing tires. And speaking of desert racing, this thing has a six speed transmission. So you can be going down the road 50, 55 miles an hour. You still got a gear to go. This thing will go down the Baja Strip at 65 miles an hour all day long. And they're built to last. The Penton KTMs were built with no regard to price, it was always about how do we build the best off-road bike we can. And that stands true today with KTM as they continue to dominate the off-road market. But this one here is just an absolute nightmare. This thing's stone cold. And when you start it, there's a tickler on here. These obviously carbureted. Uh, you, you hit the tickler like, like that right there and you fire it up. Usually it'll start first kick. If you kick it right. spectacular machine I think I covered most of the fit and finish on the bike but look at some of the things like the uh, the engine case stay on there to uh, make it part of the uh, structural member and reduce vibration how beautifully plated that is everywhere you look on this bike cosmetic perfection and it obviously the engine performs like a brand new motorcycle it's a true time capsule investment quality classic and you got to ask yourself 
What would it What would it take if you were to buy uh, a 1975 GS Penton KTM <clears throat> off of Facebook Marketplace or eBay that runs and needs a restoration? Let's say you pay 3,500 to 4,000, which is a, what a decent runner goes for today. What would it take for you in time, aggravation, and money to strip it right down to the frame like this one's been done? If you could even find, actually, if you were to find a low hour mint original like this one, you'd probably be pay, paying north of five. And then to strip it down to the frame, to have a, a pristine dent free frame with original straight rims and the original exhaust and mint shape, to find one and take it down to the frame and completely rebuild the engine, polish all the aluminum, repaint it. You'd be looking at 100 to 125 hours labor if you could even find a shop that would do it. And of course, you got to chase the parts find all the parts to do it you, you're, you you'd spend north of 10 grand in, in parts and labor to to recreate this so what's this worth today well this is having a john penton signed penton is the equivalent of a carol shelby signed mustang you know um it's really the same thing john penton designed and built and marketed and raced these him and his son both let me get it in the sunlight him and his there we go can you zoom in on that now him and his son, and, and that was signed <clears throat> 21 years ago, okay? Um, just remarkable, the condition of this bike. The, 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 the entire frame-off restoration on this bike has about an hour ride time, tops, and all on the tar, like you saw here. It has not been through the dirt or the mud. It's just, could you do that with it? Yeah, could you take it to Mid-Ohio and race it and win a hair scramble with it or a motocross? Yes, you could, but the, the amount of effort, this is, and if you've got the money and you can afford to do that and you don't care, uh, you could do that. But this is absolutely a museum piece. Look at the top, the plating on the top of the fork caps. Usually that's all marred up from being, uh, you know, wrenched off the bike. It's all, all like brand new. Um, that's why I said, even, even the, look, look at the, the, the stop for the steering stem adjuster. Usually those are all smashed up and the, the hardware is all new. The rubber cap, where are you going to find that rubber cap? Or where are you going to find the proper Siriani rubber fork caps? Just beautiful, remarkable. This belongs in the, the, the KTM Penton Museum, uh, which doesn't exist, but we're gonna create it here at the New England Motorcycle Museum. Stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, increase my uh, my ambassadorship with KTM, not only as a gas gas dealer, but the, the full model lineup. I'd love to build a museum here for them with bikes like this. So if you buy this bike and, and you wanna leave it on display, we'd love to have it. We put it in the, in the uh, vintage trail bike section. If you're wondering what that is over there, if you look at the frame on this one, the, the front frame's head stay and the dual down tube on that one, they look similar. But if you look at the back of the bike, you can see this was the first year of the laid down shock. And there's quite a bit of difference in the rear tubing. If you look at the, uh, the, the diameter and the shape of this rear tubing here versus this one over here, you can see that it's been heavily strengthened for the new model year. This one's a narrow, like half inch tube. That one's like four times the structural rigidity and the shock is pulled back. The wheelbase is a little bit longer. It's laid down. Um, this was one of the KTM Pentons also, but it was the previous year model. Very exciting time to be a, a, an off-road rider. I lived through this era. I was born in 65 and I was obsessed with motorcycles. And I had a, uh, started racing in 74. So I saw all these bikes and every year when something new came out, like the lay down shocks, that was that was quite a quite a uh, uh, remarkable time to be a motorcycle rider, and um, not a lot of these survived. Very few of these survived, and very even fewer are in this kind of museum quality condition. So, if you're looking for an investment quality classic that's done, uh, that's going to outpace inflation, buy this bike. KTM's a rising star. They're dominating the off-road market, and, and their this is their history, the Penton KTM legacy. Thanks for watching and God bless America.